Hello, this is the Preparation and Properties of Hydrogen Gas Lab for Integrated Science 1. First thing we'll do is go over the materials that you'll be using in this lab or that you used in this lab. The first thing is the gas collection trough, which is this blue thing. Inside of it, you'll see that there is a shelf right there. Also, there is two tubes attached. The one on the top is for draining of the water if you fill up too much, which will be in the sink. The one on the bottom it will be connected to the reaction chamber, which also is connected to a hole at the bottom of the trough, which will allow for the gases to bubble up. The next is the uh, gas collection chamber, uh, bottles, the rectangular shaped ones. These are the ones that you'll fill up completely with water and submerge in the reaction trough. The glass squares are what you're going to use to cover them up so that we can turn them upside down without losing any water. Here you can see the technique we'll use for the reaction squares to be able to keep the water in there and also submerge them. The next piece of equipment is the reaction chamber, which has two parts, the cork and the reaction chamber itself, which is the cylindrical jar. The two parts here are two tubes, there's a plastic and a glass. The plastic goes much further than the glass tube down. The plastic is actually called the thistle tube. The glass one will be connected to the tube that goes to the bottom of the trough. like so. This is the zinc. This zinc will go in the bottom of the reaction chamber, the cylindrical glass tube. This is a graduate cylinder. Okay, the next thing is part A, uh, part one of the procedure, assembling the gas collection apparatus. So in this we have our trough, which is full of water, and our collection chamber, which the glass tube is now connected to the rubber tube, which is now connected to the hole at the bottom of the gas collection chamber. Our overfill tube is in the sink. Water is in the trough. So now we're going to take our, react our gas collection containers and fill them with water all the way to the top until they're overflowing like so once they're filled all the way to the top and they're overflowing we'll take one of the other glass squares and cover it so that no water can get out and also no air can get in we'll invert it upside down in the trough and then take the glass square out this allows for the water to stay in and then we'll just ge very gently move the gas collection chamber to the shelf so it's kind of out of the way making sure that the opening stays underwater the entire time. And right, now we're ready for the fun part. Now we're ready to start making some hydrogen gas. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take our zinc and put it in the reaction container. We're going to mix the zinc with hydrochloric acid. I know in the procedure it says sulfuric, but in this case we're using hydrochloric to produce our hydrogen gas. So we'll put enough in there to basically coat the bottom of the jar of zinc. Once we have our zinc in there, we will add a little bit of water, just enough water so that the water level will cover the bottom of the plastic tube, the thistle tube, but not be anywhere near the glass tube. We want to essentially make sure that the plastic tube is covered so that there's only one opening in the reaction chamber, like so. So the plastic tube is in the liquid, but the glass tube is up much higher than it. And so we can see our zinc and our water with the water above the plastic tube. And our glass tube is still wide open way at the top of the chamber. And so now we're going to take our HCl and we're going to pour it through the thistle tube. Alright, now we're ready to add the HCl. This is where you'll be making some of your observations. So you'll notice the camera moves around a little bit. And feel free to move around the video if you like. 
So we have our thistle tube, which is covered with the water. Our zinc is down there as well. Our thistle tube serves as a way to deliver that HCl directly to the zinc. And so go ahead and pour that in slowly in small increments, about three to five mils at a time. And you can see once it gets in there, then it starts to react with the zinc and starts to bubble. The camera will zoom in in a second so you can get a closer look. Once the, all the HCl is added, <coughs> we will see that the reaction is going full go. If you have a little trouble getting the HCl down, you can always loosen the stopper to help to get the HCl to go through the thistle tube. All the while making sure our plastic tube, the bottom of the plastic tube is covered with a liquid and the glass one is not. So you can see all the bubbles being produced. All those bubbles are hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas is being forced through the glass tube which is then pumped through the rubber tube to the bottom of the trough, which then bubbles up like so. So our hydrogen gas is being produced in the reaction chamber, passed through the tube to the bottom. And now we're going to use our collection jars to collect it. So we move the collection jar over the bubbles, and the bubbles will go into the chamber, and we'll force the water out, and we'll have a chamber or a container completely filled with hydrogen gas. So you can see the reaction was uh, a little hard to capture all the hydrogen gas because uh, there were some leaks in the tube. So I'm trying to keep the tube as closed as possible. And uh, once that collection jar is completely filled with hydrogen gas, um, um, it'll move back to the shelf and we'll move the next container onto the bubbles and collect all of them, all of the bubbles in that second container. Essentially we do the same thing with, that we did to this first jar with all three of them. So at the end of this, we'll have three jars completely filled with hydrogen gas. And now we're to the part of the procedure where we remove the jars full of hydrogen gas out of the trough. You can see I've already removed two of them. This is where we use those glass squares again. So we put that underneath in the water to cover the opening so that the hydrogen gas stays in the jar. Take it out. And then we just very carefully slide it onto the table so that that gas stays in a nice, relatively sealed container. And now for the really fun part, the testing of the hydrogen gas. So at this point we have three jars on our lab bench that are both all filled with hydrogen gas. Of course we wear our safety goggles. The first test will take a jar and we'll take a burning splint and put the burning splint in the jar once and see what happens. Then take it out and put the burning splint back in a second time into the same jar to see what happens as well. We're going to use the Bunsen burner as a way to light our splints so we can get our burning splint. A burning splint is just a piece of wood that's on fire. So it's like a popsicle stick where an end of it is on fire. So here we go. Here's the first test. Make sure you listen well. And then the second time. And that is test number one. That first jar will now be rinsed and cleaned and ready to use for the second test. For the second test, we took the clean jar and put it on top of a jar that already had hydrogen in it and let it sit for a minute. So now we have our two jars, the one on top that was the one that was completely empty or filled with fresh air, and the one on the bottom that was filled with hydrogen. 
and so now we have them both, and we'll test them both in the same way by taking our burning split and putting them in the jar. <coughs> we'll start with the one that had hydrogen in it, bottle number two. There you go, and then we'll test the bottle that had fresh air in it, that was bottle number one. Now we're going to get ready to do test number three. We're going to take the third bottle for test number three, and we're going to turn it upside or open side up on the table for one minute. So we're going to turn it around. There we go. And we'll leave it like that for one minute. And we'll come back and we'll do the same burning splint test. All right, it's been a minute. We'll go ahead and take another burning splint, put it into the jar and see what happens. Alright, there you go. Any questions or anything or concerns about the video or the lab, do see Mr. Dowling.